two, one. Hello, hello, friends and family. Welcome in for another episode of Live at Five-ish from Pastor Lauren. As we uh, look into, or take a quick dive into the book of Matthew, chapter 22 today. I have a little crooked here. An oddball feeling. Well, hoping today is finding you guys well and full of faith and ready to see what else it is that the Lord has to say. Isn't that just exciting? We get to sit down and, and just let him wash our feet. Correct us. Put us in the right place all the time. And put us in our place. Huh? I always need that. Just to get checked somehow, some way. Oh, but we carry on, we carry on. He does it so lovingly. I, I like his way better than anybody else's. Most of the time, unless we get stubborn. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I get stubborn myself. Hi, Sonic. Great to see you. <clears throat> I can actually read your comments today. Yay! But I can't see who's watching. So, I don't know. I got, got about half the, the deal going here. And this is it's still I'm grateful. I'm grateful because we're hearing we're hearing that a lot of good things are coming from this effort. And I just praise the Lord in that because he's using it. That's all that means. He's using it to uh, get his word out there one way or another. And that's what we're hope to do. So <clears throat> I love it when a prayer comes together. Amen. Amen. Well, oh, and then also, happy birthday to you. If today's your birthday, do yourself a favor and receive the free gift that God has wrapped up for you in Jesus, his son. Dying on the cross for your sins. You can trade him all your sins for his forgiveness and love and for his salvation. It's a free gift. You can't earn it. It's just all yours just because he loves you. And all you have to do is believe in him. And then read his word and do it. Amen. It's the believing that saves you. The doing shows that you really are meaning what you think. <laughs> All right. Well, we're ready to jump into Matthew chapter 22 today. It's kind of lengthy, so I thought I would talk less on the beginning end. And, and uh, so we can expound more on the study end. Now, well, let's see where we can go with this. First is the parable of the wedding banquet. I'll be reading from the NIV, my least favorite version, but that's what I have available today. It says, Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Hmm. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. Amen. Isn't that exciting? I'd be like, woo! Hold me back. Oh, here we go. Oh, hold me back. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants and mistreated them and killed them. So we got some that are just saying, oh, I'm too busy. I got too much to do to, to be diving in and doing doing silly things like going to the wedding feast of the king. Are you kidding me? The king is giving you an invitation. And in this scenario, it's not the king of the land. It's the king of kings. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to give it away, though. I don't want to give it away. And he sent his army and destroyed those murderers. Wait a minute. The king was enraged. Why? Because the rest seized his servants mistreated them and killed them those that he sent out go and tell the people to come to my come to my wedding feast that i'm preparing for them and they killed his servants and mistreated them beat them abused them talked bad about them isn't that something well the king was enraged he sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city Ooh. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone who will find, who, anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there 
who was not wearing wedding clothes. And he asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? And the man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot, and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. Wow, there is so much there. It's unbelievable. Well, first, as we begin to unpack this parable, we begin to see when Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. So ultimately, we know it's about the kingdom of heaven. That's talking about God. And then his son was Jesus. And the wedding banquet and the invitations being sent out is the gospel message. All coming to the banquet of the wedding where the bride comes. And that's those who have come to the fullness of God. And he sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come. But they refused to come. They're too busy. They turn their heart to the ways of the world. So the invitation is the gospel message. The gospel message speaking about what Jesus did that uh, reforms us, that brings us back, that, that uh, saves our very soul, right? The gospel message that goes out, and though we be lost in our transgressions and sins, we are reconciled back to God to the gospel wedding. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. We had invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. How often has that ever happened? When you are sending out the invitation of love and telling everybody about Jesus and to repent, turn away from the ways of the world and forget, you know, just forget those things, forego those things, let them go. And don't turn back to the ways of the world, but rather repent from the ways of sin. And come to the wedding feast. You get prepared for the wedding feast. What is that garment that we should put on? That garment is the righteousness of Christ. Knowing that except we have his righteousness upon us, we cannot be welcomed into the place of the presence of God. Because we are offensive to him. We, he, we can, our sins and our nakedness is clearly seen. And to come to him, we must come to him according to his standard and not our own. If anybody that comes in any other way is a thief and a robber. Jesus is the door. And his righteousness is that covering that we are to put on through his blood. Amen. Isn't that an incredible story? I love that. But what they do. Not only did they say no and turned away, and that still happens to this very day. I see those who are resisting the truth, who are resisting to repent from sin. They will even come in to the presence of God by their works or by some other way without putting the righteous garment on of repentance and coming through some other way. And then they will be found out and cast out. For I knew you not. Depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity. I never knew you, says the Lord. Thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that place of outer darkness are, is that place of the pit. And he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. When we stand before the presence of God, we will not ever be able to say anything to defend ourselves. All of us, there's not one good, no, not one. That's me too, me too. None are righteous, no, not one. That's me too. It's only Jesus' righteousness that I'm able to put on. It's if I believe in him, I hear his word and go and do it. Amen. Praise the Lord for that, because otherwise I, I wouldn't have a prayer. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot, bind him and throw him out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. You have been chosen this day, chosen to turn and accept the invitation that Jesus has given you to come to the wedding banquet, to come to the feast, 
and accept his gospel, that he is the one who has sent into the world, that there is nobody else by which you may be saved. Accept that, and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, and accept the invitation of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? Is this good stuff or what? I'm loving it. Then the Pharisees went out and laid, laid plans to trap him in his words. They understood he was talking about them. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, Oh, you hypocrites. Why are you trying to trap me? <laughs> oh, boy. Show me the coin used for paying the tax. Don't you wish sometimes you just had, had that kind of wisdom? <laughs> oh, boy. They brought him a denarius, a coin from the time. And he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? And Caesar, Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. You know, the next thing that he could have said was, Look at yourself. Bring a man to me. Whose image is upon this, this person? All of us have the image of God on us, right? And let us render unto God what is God's. We are made in his image. You are made in his image, male and female. Let us render unto God what is God's. Amen. That same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for him. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first one married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and the third brother, right down to the seventh. Oh my goodness. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be at the seventh? Since all of them were married to her, Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. Ooh, that's interesting right there, because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read of what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees and Pharisees, got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Oh, wow, can we do that? And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And you can break it down as, as you continue to go. It is any commandment that we break, any transgression is against God and against men. So if we love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and mind, and we love our neighbor as ourselves, we are keeping all the laws and the precepts. It's just all comes down to love. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? And whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him the Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand 
until I put your enemies under my feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day, from that day on, no one dared ask him any more questions. No way they could trap him in any kind of their games and, and taunt. You know, it's happening still every day. We have to be careful of that. As it was back when we see the things going on in the parable of the wedding banquet. The things that had happened was he sent out the invitation. He sent his servants out. And then he sent more servants out. I heard it in a commentary one time. So he sent his servants to those who he had who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent more servants out and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calf have been butchered and everything is ready to come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention still and went off, one to his field and another to his business. I heard in the commentary at one time that it's interesting how the Lord or the King, the King of Kings, uh, he sent out his servants to go and spread the word. And thinking that perhaps they had shared the word maybe in such a way that offended, he sent even more servants out to try again. But still, they turned away and went away off doing their own things. They paid no attention and went off, and one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants and ministers, mistreated them, and killed them. And the king was enraged. That's the, that is the way where the Lord has sent out his word through his prophets and preachers and teachers. And all those who minister in the, in the word, even still today, and many are mistreated for standing up for the truth. Is sent. So then what happens is the king gets finally enraged about what's going on and ultimately comes and he sets everything right. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. And if we look back to Israel the day when Jesus came um, and when finally the sun came, was trying to get everybody ready, but still they rejected him, as we saw in the other parables, uh, just before that, in chapter 21. We saw that they even mistreated not only the servants, the, the, the prophets and the preachers and all those and the priests, all those who came testifying of the truth of God, they also mistreated his only son, the heir. They said, come, let us kill the heir and let us seize his inheritance. Oh, how awful of a thing to have done. But still, it's still being done today. I know I was guilty of it myself. Many times I have rejected the truth until finally the day came that I recognized, oh my goodness, I'm in big trouble if I keep rejecting this. When the gospel message is being presented to you like it's being presented to you right now, it, it, today is the day of salvation. This is the day to listen and to hear the word of the Lord. As he says, this day I lay before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that it be well with you. And as he's sending out that invitation to hear you take this invitation, I remember many times in, in the weddings that I had done, I'm, or just been invited to go to, I would get an invitation, maybe months in advance, and I would keep that invitation. And sometimes it would, you can only enter in by invitation only. So you'd have to keep that invitation, knowing that when the day comes, you get all dudded up and put your goodies on, you know, a tuxedo or your fanciest t-shirt, and you go and, uh, and you show up and whatever is acceptable. And you come and you bring that invitation, you know, show it. I've got this invitation to come. And everybody knows of the proper time and place to meet. 
There's so many mysteries being unraveled even in that. But yet, can you imagine being mis mistreating those who had seen the mailman just beating him up for <laughs> the invitation? That's the silliest thing I ever heard. <laughs> um, well, that's the same thing that happens with the prophets and the priests and the ministers and everybody that brings the word of God. We get beat up for bringing the invitation. <laughs> To bring in the word of God and trying to keep things proper because we understand that he has a standard that he has raised up by which all of us are to live and if we can continue to stand in that way not being conformed to the ways of the world but transformed by his word to the renewing of our mind to his word then we are being brought to that proper place and we can walk well in him good in him and be accepted in his presence. So we've got the proper garment on and we've done all, everything according to his standard. I pray that we'll be able to continue to do that today. Myself, my family, my friends, my congregation, my, my own town here, you know, we just we want to continue to get out the word just in our surrounding town and county and beyond all the way up to the big guys you know we're hoping that if everybody if the whole world would take a hold of these truths all of us would be in a whole lot better shape and we wouldn't be dealing with the terrors and tragedies that we are today and like israel did just shortly after they rejected jesus it was one of the most horrific times that israel had ever seen and it was um incredible to read back in the history books all the things that have been said about that time i don't know if anybody if any of you have ever looked kind of deep into that but it's horrific hearing the stories of the things that had happened um but anyway we remember that because that kind of is the same scenario if we refuse the invitation of the lord and we turn our heart and back on him then what we have to look forward to is a horrific end. That's one more reason why I like to try to take another opportunity to try to put this gospel out there, put the truth out there with you guys and to share it every day. Well, thank you for your time. God bless you guys. And I pray that you'll be able to take this word and, and uh, just apply it to every part of your being, mind, soul, and spirit. And then look forward to all the blessings that's going to come in every part of your being too in jesus name you guys have a good day and uh, we pray that we'll be able to come back together lord willing as we dive into matthew chapter 23. have a blessed day and remember above all else i love each other and trust in jesus Bye -bye. there it is i found it i found it see you later